Craig, we are live. All right. It is awesome to uh, to have you here today. I'm so excited we could sit down and chat. I uh, for everyone joining us, I'm Shannon Williams. I am one of the founders and the president here at Acorn Labs, and I am joined today by Craig Jellick. Craig, you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. Yeah, my name's Craig Jellick. Uh, been with Acorn since day one. Software architect here. Uh, so you know that means writing a lot of code right now, and. Uh, just uh, figuring out what Acorn's going to be and uh, how we can make users happy with it. Yeah, it's going to be, a, it should be a lot of fun today because Craig is going to talk to us about really how inside of Acorn Labs, we've been using Acorn to run one of our more critical services, our DNS service. But Craig and I have known each other for years and years now, at least, gosh, at least 10 years. Um, Craig was one of the founding engineers at Rancher Labs and uh, really worked Prior to that, with Darren over at GoDaddy, uh, you know, building up the GoDaddy cloud. So we've known each other a long time, and it's uh, it's fun to get a chance to chat about this. If you didn't see the article, you can find the article that uh, Craig wrote earlier this week uh, up on the Acorn blog, and you know he talks in it and shows some good examples about really um, you know what we have been using Acorn for. And I think that's the what we're hoping to chat about today. And we'll probably be here for about 15 to 20 minutes and just chat a little bit about that. Um, we're streaming across three platforms. So if you're seeing this on Twitter or YouTube or LinkedIn, um, feel free to send in questions or comments. And we will do our best to answer them as they come on in. But I thought to maybe start us off, Craig, you could give us a little bit of the background of you know, how you started, made the decision that you were going to use uh, Acorn to run this service and exactly what it is. What is this DNS feature? And maybe give us some, some background on the whole idea. Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, I think one of the key tenants of our engineering team is we want to make sure we're, quote unquote, dog fooding um, at Acorn Labs. So this was sort of the first opportunity to do so. We wanted to make sure we wanted to be the first users of Acorn itself. Um, and this service, uh, you know, it's public facing. So if you run Acorn today, you're interacting with this service. Uh, so it was really just a great opportunity to prove Acorn out in a quote unquote production setting. You know, Acorn is alpha now, so the stakes are relatively low, um, but it was still a good, good opportunity to, to really uh, find all the kinks in Acorn. So the DNS service is basically when you uh, when you install Acorn and you run your first Acorn, if you follow our like getting started guide, uh, ultimately your application is going to be accessible on a public URL. And we set up that uh, FQDN for you by interacting with this DNS service. So it'll actually put in a real uh, DNS entry for your application that resolves on the public internet. Now, if you're running on a local cluster type like Docker desktop or Rancher desktop. Uh, that's actually just sort of a, it all, it will just always resolve to local host. Um, but if you're running on, you know, EKS or any of the cloud providers, SIVO, uh, the DNS entry will actually resolve to the public endpoints of your cluster. Um, so, you know, right out of the gate, you have, uh, you have a publicly accessible URL for your applications, which if you just did that in raw Kubernetes, be many more steps uh, and just much more overhead. And that's sort of the theme throughout Acorn, right? It's just taking sort of all the power of Kubernetes and making it a little more accessible, a little more easier to use for app developers. Makes a lot of sense, Greg. So when you guys were designing this service, um, where did you decide to deploy it? Is it uh, running in the cloud somewhere? Or are you running this on Amazon? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, partially because we're also changing where it's running. <laughs> so. Uh, for the very, you know, initial run, um, we got it up running in AWS, but that's just a single node. You know, the initial the initial run was like a single node K3S cluster, uh, which is super easy to use. We were able to get it up and running. And, uh, and that's, you know, what we wanted to do for the initial release. Now we're in the process of migrating to a little more production grade cluster, um, which again, just goes right back to pushing the limits of what Acorn can do and sort of its capabilities because we want to prove it's easy, you know, to use Acorn to do these types of migrations and things. 
Um, and so, yeah, we're running it in the cloud in a simple cluster now. And literally this week, we're in the process of migrating to a more robust cluster, which is pretty cool. So we have, you know, this is a database backed uh, service. So there's a database migration in there as well, which Acorn makes easier too. So it's pretty, pretty fun, pretty, pretty uh, fun to see sort of the operation side come into effect. Nice. So uh, what exactly did you have to write and what did it, what did it end up looking like? Maybe, I don't know if you have anything you want to show us or maybe walk through, but it'd be yeah. great. To, uh, to kind of understand what the process was like that you went through when you said, okay, we're going to build this, we're going to run it out. And mm -hmm. now, uh, now as you're thinking about moving it, what it looks like. Sure. Uh, do you want to, okay. So this is just, uh, this is the service. It's um, open source. Uh, There's actually a user asking uh, earlier this week if they could run their own copy of it. And we're like, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's early alpha, but you can run your own version of the DNS service and set it up yourself if you want. Um, but at the core of it, uh, or sort of what powers the Acorn side of it, not the code side of it, is this Acorn file. Uh, and this is really what the blog talks about in depth is just the process of developing the Acorn and deploying it and all the hooks into, you know, the other parts of our stack and our CI system and our GitOps flow and all that. But this is absolutely um, at the core of it. And, you know, I'm a I'm a developer uh, by background. I come from development background, not from an ops background. Uh, so to have sort of the ability to write this Acorn file and see it translate all the way through to operations for me, uh, that was really useful. Um, and it, it made it easy to translate from what I was doing locally all the way to production. Uh, so, so this Acorn file, you know, one of the first things I did was uh, I took a Docker Compose version because at the time I started writing this code, Acorn didn't even exist in a sort of usable fashion. And I'm very used to spinning up applications using a simple, you know, multi, multi container applications using a simple Docker Compose file. Um, and so I was basically able to do a very simple translation from my Docker Compose file to this Acorn file once we were sort of ready to go. Uh, and keep in mind, like the reason I did that was because at the time, Acorn basically didn't exist. So it was fun to kind of see the things move along together. Um, but the application is pretty straightforward. It has, you know, in here, it has sort of the application uh, container, which is where my API is running. And then it has this DB database container defined down here. Uh, and these two things talk to each other sort of as you would expect, there's sort of, you know, some basic service discovery, so to speak. The, the application is looking for a service called DB and that is accessible because I defined it as such here. Um, so when I'm running locally, super simple. I deploy this Acorn locally, it pops up in Docker desktop or Rancher desktop, whichever one I have to be using that day, spins up the database and then my API can talk to the database. Uh, and this is really not a production grade uh, database. It's, it's a toy and it's meant to be because it's for local development. But when I went to, uh, when we went to deploy this in production, the cool thing is we could swap this out. Uh, actually, let me I think the easiest thing here would be if I bring up the blog article here. So I'm able to swap out sort of that toy database with a production grade one. Uh, I just want to find that really quickly here, bring it all together. Here we go, just by linking it in here. So this is deploying sort of a production grade database using the production MariahDB Acorn that we've developed. And uh, this linking is just saying, you know, swap out the toy and instead use that production grade database that's already been deployed. So that was one important aspect of it. The other really, I guess, cool thing was hooking this into CI uh, and then ultimately into GitOps. Shin, uh, do you have anything to add or should I keep going? No, I think keep going. This is great. Like, I think we're, okay. you're really making it very clear and easy. Okay, I just realized I was going there, so I <laughs> figured I'd pause. So uh, it has, GitHub actions are so powerful and I think everyone uh, really can see that those are going to take over a lot of CI in the world. Uh, and, and using GitHub Actions to build and publish 
uh, the acorn was really straightforward. So we we wrote these GitHub actions. You can see here we have one for setup and one for login. And so sort of the entirety of my uh, uh, publishing process happens in the in this action where when we push a tag and it starts with V, I label all my tags sort of V zero dot, you know, typical semver, uh, this action will kick off um, and it logs me into uh, GHCR, uh, which is GitHub's container registry. Uh, and then it sets up Acorn within the GitHub runner. Uh, so everything's just up and running and Acorn's there. And then just the simple building and pushing uh, pushes the Acorn to GitHub container registry. So the flow is really simple to get a new version up. It's just like publishing a Docker image. And that's really the one of the powerful things about Acorn is you know, it's, it's kind of doing for multi-tiered applications, the same thing that Docker did. You can just push one artifact to any registry. Um, so yeah, this pushes everything, the, the, the application definition, the underlying container images as a single artifact into the GitHub container registry. And from there we can actually deploy it. But just for those of you not familiar with GitHub Container Registry, when you push to it, it shows up as a package right on your repo. If I jump into here, this is the Acorn DNS Acorn. Uh, and obviously all of, uh, all of GitHub's sort of built-in documentation assumes Docker, but the equivalent here is I can run Acorn pool on this image or Acorn run on this image and uh, I'm off, you know, off to the races with with uh, Acorn DNS up and running. So you're uh, using GitHub to do the build of the images, and and what about the deployment side? That's sort of the CI side. It sounds like you're using all of, uh, you know, GitHub Actions. Are you deploying to the cluster through here as well, or using some more kind of GitOps type of approach? Yeah. So so we're using uh, we're using GitOps. Um, the particular tool we're using is uh, Rancher Fleet. We happen to be familiar with it, but uh, you know Flux, uh, Argo, those it works with all of those. We had a bug early on, I think, that someone discovered a user discovered with Flux, but we fixed that pretty quickly. Uh, but I go over that in the blog too. Uh, the repo where sort of our GitHub, or sorry, our GitOps things is private. So I don't want to share that particular repo, but I have sort of the relevant bits uh, here. So so basically, you know, GitOps works, you're, you're committing your deployment uh, manifest to, to a Git repository, and then your GitOps tool, in this case, Fleet picks it up and deploy it, deploys it. So this is basically, you know, I did a PR to our GitOps repo with this as the content. So this is just sort of the API version of what you get when you do an Acorn run. And what's cool is this is sort of like this Acorn run dash O YAML. That's basically saying, give me the output of what you would run rather than actually running it. So can grab this and put it into a pull request, uh, have that reviewed by, you know, our, our ops team. And, uh, and, and yeah, deploy from there. Um, so uh, this is sort of, it's a two-step process, um, but if you can imagine, we can have deeper hooks into when that, when that image is published to the GitHub container registry, um, we could build an automation to sort of automatically do a new deployment, that sort of thing. And I think that's where we see a lot of the future of Acorn is really taking it end to end. Um, and making a smooth process throughout. So this one is for deploying the uh, database. And then down here, we have deploying the actual application that makes use of that database. And you can see I'm saying I want it, a bit, I want it running on the URL alpha-dns acorn.io, hook it up to the prod database that we deployed. And then this is how we're sharing secrets between the database and the application because they need to talk to each other. Uh, so yeah, pulling it all together can publish the image and then uh, drop this YAML just like you would any other Kubernetes YAML into your existing GitOps flow. And uh, you have a pretty cool end-to-end -end solution. Craig, you, you're using this, you said you're running it in Amazon. Um, why why use MariaDB? Why not use RDS, something like that? It seems like yeah. it might be simpler. 
That's a great, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, the truth of the answer is we wanted to make it as hard on ourselves as possible, because if we can run a production database using Acorn, then other folks can run other, you know, production uh, stateful applications. And that's really sort of a very important thing for us is, you know, the proof that this is good enough and powerful enough and robust enough to allow you to run stateful applications where the data matters and you can't lose the data because, you know, stateless applications in Kubernetes are pretty straightforward. It's when you have to care about the data where things get more interesting and, you know, figuring out migrations and uh, those sort of data migrations, backups, restores, all of that is, is critical to what we know people want to do with Kubernetes. Awesome. And so, you know, as you're, you know, kind of got this service running, you've been working with Acorn now for a few months to build this up. And obviously you're working on the Acorn project itself. What's it been like working with this type of brand new alpha software? I mean, uh, obviously you and Darren and Vince and Bill, everyone's, you know, kind of talking constantly about features that you'd like to do work on. But what what is uh, what's the overall experience been like, and you know any thoughts now that you've got some of these live services running, how it's working? Yeah, so uh, it's it's been exciting, that's for sure. And uh, early on, you know, we were we were doing this before Acorn was even live, you know, so uh, that that obviously had plenty of kinks to work out. But it was really really exciting to see sort of you know building this deployment from scratch and and watching it work in the real world. Uh, and it's been really fun to see the community come and sort of hit the same problems we hit or hit the same sort of like questions that we hit when we were running our own, trying to do this for ourselves. So we had the answers there because we had went through it. Um, but it's, you know, as alpha software, it's going to change a lot. It's going to continue to change a lot. And, uh, you know, that, that makes sense. Um, but it's been a very useful exercise and, you know, it helps us stay mindful of what we're building and our users and everything if we're, if we're doing it ourselves. Awesome. It helps to have Darren on the phone too, if something <laughs> isn't working properly in Acorn. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny, because I, I had Darren join the stream and I wanted to, to add him in. Darren, you there? Yeah, can you hear me? I can, you're live with us as well. Right. That was not planned. I did not mean to say <laughs> like that that was pretty good oh no i went up like oh this looks like fun i didn't want to i didn't want to spoil the party for you but it was like this, this looks like fun i always like talking yeah exactly well and it was funny because i was thinking as we were working uh, towards the end and we've got to drop in a few minutes but the the kind of real question i have for both of you is we've been now out uh, out in public with acorn for a couple weeks what kind of uh, things have you been learning as you're hearing from users? What's the feedback been? Anything that is uh, you know top of mind right now as you're working towards the next couple releases? Uh, uh, Craig, you have anything? Yeah, I mean, I have sort of uh, some short-term tactical things. Uh, I think one of the real big pieces of feedback we saw kind of implicitly and explicitly is just ironing out the install process, you know? So uh, folks are coming to us with varying degrees of expertise in Kubernetes and Docker and all that. So just sort of like making it dead obvious when you install Acorn, if your cluster is ready to do so. So you might not even know, I need an ingress controller because this is your first time with Kubernetes. We'll tell you that in some cases we can install it for you, those sorts of things. So smoothing out the install process is one. Uh, again, short-term tactical, the thing that I'm working on right now is the ability to add annotations and labels to anything that Acorn deploys. That sounds boring, but it actually enables a lot of uh, integrations with other Kubernetes tools. You know, So like Cert Manager, you can get a Cert on demand by dropping a annotation on a particular resource or... Uh, or you know, if you want more advanced ingress functionality, again, that's all driven by annotations. So this feature, while kind of you know boring, will enable a lot of integrations with other tools in the ecosystem. When I know you're, you're good. I was going to say, when do you think that will uh, that will be available? Yeah, we're targeting release end of the month uh, with 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 those improvements. I think. Nice. Yeah, I want I want to say so. Like as we've launched this, the the response has been like overwhelmingly positive, which really shocked me. Like, I'm really excited about that. You know, it's like 
you know, us releasing this open source project. And then also, you know, we're, we're doing a startup. So there's kind of like two sides of like, let's build a business and make money. And then there's, you know, just creating an open source project. Um, I don't care so much about the business making money. I, I just like building things that like users really enjoy. So it's like, I built this largely for like for myself, you know, it's kind of like, it has a lot of like kind of my opinion or taste or kind of what I would want to see, which is always a big risk when you put it out there of like, well, does this resonate with other people? And so like to see the response of like people reading the, like the initial blog and it clicking and they get it and they're like, Oh yeah, this is great. Um, that's been awesome. And then it's been really fun to see it. Like as people have been playing with it, to just see that people are having fun with it. Like, they're like, Oh, this is like enjoyable. Obviously there's like bugs and issues and we're fixing things as fast as we as fast as we can and you know trying to like oh can it do this and it's like oh i don't know you know so we've got like this big roadmap of all these things like this has been like what craig did like putting acorn dns into production it like it's been great because it pointed out all these things or it's like you know acorn makes like like the development and packaging the application awesome but like now moving to forward to production we're like oh like the GitOps side the production side the monitoring you know it's all these things where it's like oh like, can we make all that easier too? Like, there's got to be a, like, so it's, it's, it's been, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm super excited about kind of the response. It seems extremely positive. I just, you know, want to get the word out, like get more people trying it. That's, that's like the biggest thing. Awesome. Um, what are you working on right now? Like, what is the feature you're like, kind of, you've got working towards? Oh, I mean, I'm doing something that that's kind of like a, a, a little crappy <laughs> because we we wanted to like the the, the syntax we have the, the acorn file syntax which is like it's technically right now kind of like a derivative of q but it's like it's our own thing it's not actually q and so like what i'm doing right now is like making sure we kind of formalize that so that like, we know it's maintainable going forward so i'm doing some like kind of low level technical work around the 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 language and stuff and kind of ironing that out so we can properly define it um so that's kind of what i'm like working on just like this week and kind of knocking that out um but coming forward like i mean there's so many things going on right now like what we're designing or whatever it's like i was just talking to, to bill about like how do we do scanning like just making like image scanning super easy um you know it's like um you know integrating like trivi or or um uh, gripe or what's the other one claire um like how do we make those like so we have some cool enhancements that that bill's been doing um some things uh it's like how do we make this run with eks just a no-brainer um so like we got i think we have a blog coming out soon around eks i'm excited about that or just like look how easy like set up eks you know run acorn it's like how much you know <laughs> how much easier could this be um and then and then like there's a lot of cool stuff in the pipeline that's really in the design stage of like, what can we really do to make CI and CI CD awesome? So like there's been some discussion in the community around like this kind of like Acorn test command. Um, Cause it's like Acorn, we can run this app. Well, it's like, well, part of CI, you run, need to run tests, unit tests, integration tests. Like unit tests are typically pretty easy, but integration tests get a lot harder. Like how do you spin up an environment, run all these like tests against a live API with, with stuff. And so it's like the Acorn test like that's one fe feature I think is really cool. So there's like, there's just tons of stuff that's like come up and like, oh wow, we could really simplify and make this easy. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about kind of where we're going with this. Awesome. Well guys, we're gonna have to drop. Um, thanks both of you for joining. Craig, thanks so much for really kind of opening the, uh, the cupboards up and showing people how we're doing things on our own and uh really appreciate everyone's time for joining and um are you doing this on like a schedule like i think we're gonna try to do this regularly i don't yet know if it'll be weekly or every other week between our meetups and our master yeah. class type things we're gonna figure it out but we wanted to see how easy this was i kind of enjoy it this is great it's so it's almost yeah, this was, this was like, easy yeah. yeah you can just pop in and show things so you know plug StreamYard. this is pretty cool it's pretty easy to make this stuff work even for somebody who's uh who's old and gray bearded like i am <laughs> i had to ask my teenager though i'm like can you just tell me what the streaming thing <laughs> like how do yeah, I, 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 I was gonna ask my 12 year old son i'm like hey, i don't like the streamer do this stuff <laughs> exactly all right boys thanks a lot for the time right. thanks everyone we will uh talk to you again soon take care thanks a lot. All right. see ya